I love performing for ace card tricks. There's just something so cool about them. And in a moment, I'm gonna teach you something I've never shared on this channel before. First, I'm gonna share the secrets to Doc Daly's final trick. It's called Daly's Last Card Trick or Final Trick. Uh, it's performed by professional magicians all over the world, super commercial. But years ago, I developed an opening trick, kind of a smaller trick to get into it that I think a lot of you are gonna really like. Okay, I'm gonna teach that in just a second. Uh, before I jump in and do that though, a quick reminder, if you have not clicked on this link and subscribed to my brand new YouTube channel, Sankey Says, click on the link and do it. Very soon, I'm gonna be launching 30 videos in 30 days. And all the videos are focused on the question, what makes a magician a master? If you're a magic fan, you're not gonna wanna miss any of these 30 videos. So click the link and subscribe to the brand new Sankey Says YouTube channel. Okay, my little warm up trick, which gets really sweet reactions. My warm up trick to Daily's last card trick uh, starts with a shuffle pack, which means you can go into this anytime during your performance, okay? Then you go through and you say, we're gonna use a few playing cards here. Let's see, uh, we're gonna use, uh, we'll use that one, uh, we we'll use this one, we we'll use this one, and we'll use this one. Now they of course have no idea which cards you're gonna use, and then you show them I'm actually gonna be using the four aces, right? We got the ace of diamonds, we got the ace of hearts, we got the ace of clubs, we got the ace of spades. Say so, look, you're gonna get to choose from the four cards, I want you to choose a color, but before you even tell me, I'm gonna take the four aces, put them inside the card case. Super fair. Only now, which color? Choose a color, red or black. And let's say they say red. They get 100% cheap, free choice. They choose red, you say fine. Which of the red cards? And they say heart, and I get 100% free choice. You say, we'll start with a heart, watch. Just like this, and like that, the heart. The other, of course, red card is the diamond, just like this, taking it out, invisibly the diamond, throwing it over there. Now, just so you don't think this whole thing is some sad cry for help, some sort of mind thing, I want you to see inside the case, they can examine the case. True to your word, you removed both the heart and the diamond, leaving just club and spade. They can look at the case. Then they can spread the cards. They can even be holding these cards from the very beginning, and they'll find impossibly the heart and the diamond, the color they chose, now appeared in among the other cards. So that's the first phase, and I came up with this many years ago to get into Daly's uh, last trick, and his trick is this. Such a pretty trick that you say, look, little observation test here. Do you think the aces are getting closer to you, or am I getting further away? Which do you think is going on here? Which do you think? And of course, they're not sure what is going on. Sometimes I ask them, do you remember the color of the backs? And they say, yes. The whole thing is an observation test. I say, well, speaking of observation tests, look, we're going to take one of the cards. Let's see. We'll take, uh, okay, diamond. Now watch. Very slowly. And the next one is going to be, okay. Another, another red one. Now, do you remember which red card went down first? They might say diamond, they might say heart. Then you just push the two cards in your hand through your fist. And you say, actually, here's the diamond and the heart. The ones that went down on the table are the club and the spade. Both of those marvelous card tricks are extremely powerful. They're what professional magicians call commercial tricks because they're direct, they're simple, they amaze people, they look like real magic, they seem so fair and clean. And in just a moment, I'm gonna reveal the secrets to both those marvelous tricks. First, I wanna give you the question of the week. I apologize, I know it's been a couple of weeks, and I'm also gonna announce the uh, winners of the last contest I did here on my channel, um, the winners for ACE, Any Card to Envelope, the ACE winners. I've got all 12 right here. I'm gonna announce them in just a moment, and I hope this week you won, okay? I really hope, uh, right you, I know you're thinking, man, I haven't won ever uh, on this channel. Uh, I hope today you win, okay? So uh, I'm gonna announce those winners in just a second, but let me ask you the question of the week now, and I'm, this is for a, um, uh, it's for a product of mine, a download called Don't Blink, featuring all of my favorite uh, card transformations and switches and changes. It's called Don't Blink. You can check it out at sankeymagic.com. Here is the question for your chance to win one of 12 of the Don't Blink products. The question is, 
who are your favorite people to perform for? And what I mean by that is not right now when we're all locked down in this terrible situation, but soon. Soon I think that we have reason to believe we're going to get back outdoors and have contact with each other. So given that, when things get back to some kind of normal, what's your favorite audience to perform for? The people at work, maybe friends and family, maybe strangers in bars, maybe, I don't know, maybe you do street magic. Maybe you do something crazy in a convenience store with a bag of chips and a, and a bit of a weird twitch. I don't know what's going on with you, but what's your favorite audience to perform for? Leave a comment down below. You'll be automatically entered into the contest for your chance to win one of 12 of my Don't Blink projects. Okay, um, let's go into this trick now. Like I said, I'll start with the shuffle deck. Love this so much. It flows so nicely. Sometimes I'll uh, have done a card trick or two and I say, you know, we've done a, a trick. We've, I, I've been doing, uh, a few, I showed you a few things um, with a full deck of cards. Let's keep it simpler. Let's use fewer cards. Some people think fewer cards may be a bit easier to catch the magician. So let's see if that's true. So under that idea of going for fewer cards, right? Uh, then I go through. And as a shuffle deck, so I know the four aces are somewhere in the pack. And what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to go through the cards. And as I spread through the first bunch, I'm going to put them down the table, okay? Or I can hand it to someone to hold on to or on a bar stool or whatever. They go down, okay? Then I keep going until I get to my four aces. Now, they're all together here because I just performed this trick. But the idea is to go through the cards and up jog or take out the could even take them out if you go, whatever. But you want to make sure that you end up with a bunch of cards over here, about half the deck, okay? And then some uh, some cards left in your hand because you're going to do a biddle steal. And it's the easiest biddle steal you'll ever do, and you'll see why in a second. Turn these cards face down, put these on top, and I arrange them, okay? Boom, like this. So I've got the blacks and the reds, okay? It doesn't matter if the reds are on bottom or on top, but the colors need to be separated. Now, they very fairly see me as I call them, they see me thumb off, ace of spades, ace of clubs, ace of diamonds, ace of hearts. They see it very fairly, and the trick is already over. Because I only have the heart and diamond here. The two black cards are underneath, already ready to go. Okay, now, the biddle steal, typically what you do with this is, often what you'll do is you'll thumb off one card, then thumb off another and keep a break underneath it with your pinky. Then you come over and you need to steal with the tips of the right fingers and the thumb. As I come over, I'm going to grab the front and the back and secretly steal that card beneath these cards. Under cover of taking the Ace of Clubs off, I do that. Now, it's not a hard move, but this is so much easier because all you're going to do is grab everything in the left hand. Those first two cards, Ace of Diamonds, Ace of Hearts. I'm going to put the whole deck directly on top of those, grab everything, everything, all under cover of sliding off the club, and then the spade. The key is pacing with this. Don't go too quickly, because even if you did something invisibly and you went heart, diamond, spade, club, it looks suspicious. Even though I didn't do the move, it still looks suspicious. So what you want to do is a steady pace, right? Ace of clubs, ace of spades, ace of diamonds, ace of hearts, right? And I stole both black cards underneath. Put these here. Okay, sometimes I don't even look at where I just put them, sort of drop them there and just casually push them aside or say, actually, we don't, uh, we own these four cards. Can you hold on to the rest? Hand them to someone to hold on to. When the magic happens in people's hands, boom, so strong, okay? Or put them off to the side, whatever. So you're in this wonderful situation. They're convinced you of the four aces, two of them are already gone. Now I'm just going to use a uh, false count and some equivocate. Let's see. Uh, turn the, and if you're new to my channel, I want you to, I don't want to just assume you've seen other videos. I can make these two cards, one, two, three, four cards. You can make two look exactly like four. I mean, you would swear I have four cards. They look and they sound. And what I'm doing is a false count. And this is an easier false count than some you'll learn in card magic. And that is where I'm taking one off. I come up. I load this right underneath. Take it with the fingertips and the thumb while I take this off. And then I'm just going to, so I'm really just exchanging, okay? This is not hard, but it does take just a little bit of practice. This is often taught with the hands going this way. I find that confusing. I prefer to snap them down, snap, coming up, putting underneath with the snap, snap. And as you, uh, if you're already a fan of my work, you know, guys, I put the last one on top and put it forward, then square it with my finger. I find that adds a little bit. So you've got 
one, two, three, and four aces, okay? But really just a two red aces. Now is the equivoque. This is where they're given the impression they had a fair choice, but they never did, in a sense. You say, okay, I got reds, I got blacks, go ahead, choose one. If they choose the blacks, you say, great, because those are the ones that are going to end up over there. If they choose the reds, you say, fine, so you want the reds. Okay, we're going to keep the reds, we're going to get rid of the blacks. So notice, they feel that no matter which one they choose, oh, uh, you choose the blacks, great, that, those are the ones we'll use, so those are the ones we'll do the magic with. If they choose the reds, you say, so you want to keep the reds. Okay, we'll keep the reds, we'll get rid of the blacks. Okay, boom and boom, works out really nicely. Now, you can, this is the part... We put these in here like this. And really now is when you're supposed to ask reds or blacks, which one. Now, this is where you can make the trick your own. This is where you can make it personal, okay? This is where you can do a magic gesture. This is where you could have them blow, there you go, wave their hands by magic. You can invisibly try to do, you can turn this back in time, back in time to when actually both of the black cards were not in the case or in my hands, they actually started in the pack. Whatever presentation works for you, okay? You can open these up or ask someone to open them up. You can show these or you can have them show a spread to show the blacks are there and then show they're not here. Either way, it is pure magic, okay? Not advanced sleight of hand. They vanished from your hands from inside the case and appeared over here. Really, really pretty. Okay, so that is a trick of mine, uh, a, sort of a warm-up for uh, Doc Daly's last card trick. Um, I'm sure uh, any professional magicians or experienced magicians watching me now, you know the handling for this classic trick, but I know some of my fans won't. So in just a second, I'm going to reveal the secret to you. First, mention two things to you. First, let's do the ace winners, okay? You won ace, if I'm about, about to mention your name. Uh, P.T. Ritchie, Jonathan Golip, David Nuttall, Magic Odyssey, Jennifer Magic, Brenda James, Mike uh, Siekman, S-I-E-K-man, uh, Raphael Matos, Alex Kolbasa, nice, I like that, I like the, the sausage, the meat, I don't know, Alex Kolbasa, Max Burton, Ash Wilton, and Tony Green, U12-1 Ace. As always, contact my team, send an email to contact at sankeymagic.com. Let them know your your YouTube name, if it's different from your real name, plus your real name, and your shipping address, and they will mail out one of the 12 Ace gimmicks to you. Really cool trick. You're going to have a lot of fun with Ace, all right? Uh, now, just before I get into this, I want to remind you again, make sure to click that link if you're not already a subscriber to my brand new Sankey Says YouTube channel. 30 videos over 30 days. Some of them are only going to be available for less than 24 hours, okay? So make sure you not only subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications. You're also going to have, I'm, I'm going to launch it very, very soon, this new channel, with the videos, 30 and 30 days. And I'm going to be giving away $1,000 in Magic Prize Packs every week, all 30 days. So basically for a month. For four weeks in a row, $1,000 in Magic Prize Pack. So click the link, subscribe to the channel. Okay, let's drop into this now. This is so pretty. Just the four aces, okay? Now, a couple little things here. You want to give them a bit of a mix. You want to make sure you've got reds and blacks separated again, okay? You square them up. Now, this mix-up I'm giving them, you do it once, twice, three times. That way they end up back into a red and black uh, separation. Is I'm putting a little pressure on the bottom card and a little pressure on the with the thumb on the top just a little and stripping or pulling out the two middle cards with the edge of my fingers you'll find with a bit of practice okay here just a little bit of practice uh, if you pull to the left with the thumb and the finger you're sort of dragging these off top and bottom that leaves you with the two middle cards in the right fingers okay so that's that's a way to give them a casual mix-up but it also is going to be the technique you use to get a very easy double lift right so Black and red, you do the observation test. Sometimes I'll say, you know, are they getting closer to you? Am I getting further away? Do you remember the colors and this kind of thing? And how many cards were there? And you ask silly questions. You're, let me get a sense, I'm getting a psychic sense of you. You, you once drank a cup of coffee, right? So whatever silliness going on there, okay? Then I do the, then you slide into the actual trick, which is this. You're gonna pull, drag the bottom one to the left, drag the top one to the right, which leaves you with this, now you're gonna take the two cards out of the middle together, Put them on top here like this and keep a little break with the finger. So what this does, it's a double lift without any get ready required. Now I'm going to turn over the top two cards as one, okay? And I'm going to hold the break again with the flesh of my thumb, all right? Showing ace of spades, turning that over, 
putting it down very slowly. This whole thing is an observation test, or maybe I would put it down. Let's say I've actually got a coffee cup right here. Let's say I could do it with a cup of coffee, where I take the card off and I put it very carefully on there like that. I don't want it falling in the, into, okay? So you're like that. Then I pull the top card off with just my thumb, just the top card this time. I'm gonna be dragging off with the thumb, which again leaves me with two cards, which I put on top, a little break like before, turn that over, showing Ace of Clubs. Turn that over and take that off. With just four cards in your hands, you've performed a beautiful routine right there where they're convinced. They're thinking, okay, did he actually switch? Is it clubs and spades, spades and clubs? But actually, you have both still in your hands. So when you say, so which went down first, clubs or spades? Some say clubs, some say spades. You show impossibly that, in fact, you have both heart and diamond here and here are the club and the spades, okay? Super duper pretty, pretty, those two. Either those tricks are strong enough to stand on their own. You put them together, very strong, very direct kind of card magic. Do not forget the question of the week. Leave a comment down below. Who are your favorite people to perform for in the whole world? What's your favorite performing situation? Where do you get the both react? Uh, where do you get the best reactions? Where do you feel most comfortable? Leave a comment down below for your chance to win my Don't Blink Card Magic Project, okay? And as I've said a couple of times, do not forget, Subscribe, okay? Subscribe to the new Sankey Says YouTube channel. Starting very soon, 30 videos in 30 days, all designed to dig deep into the question of mastery, particularly around the idea of what makes a magician a master. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great, great day.